Well, that's yesterday they were facing death when a miracle happened. I want you to take a look at this. Carol Lee and her mom, Mary Ellen, happily loaded engagement gifts into the trunk of Carol Lee's car and headed to a storage facility. They had no idea that their joyful wedding preparations were about to come to a screeching halt. Waiting to make a turn, Carol Lee looked in her rearview mirror and noticed a large truck bearing down on her. She gasped, but all words soon were drowned out by the horrific crunch of metal. Seconds later, the twisted remains of the car were struck again by a second truck. The flames began to spread throughout the car. Carol Lee and Mary Ellen tried to escape, but Carol Lee's foot was trapped by the dashboard. As the fire grew and panic set in, they heard a voice. It was the voice of a woman who would help save their lives. Please welcome Mary Ellen and Carol Lee to the show. Yes. First up, you were driving. I was driving. And uh, all of a sudden, you look up. You didn't have time to say, Ma. No, we were actually stopped, mm -hmm. waiting to make a left-hand turn. And I turned to say something to her, and just my eyes caught the rearview mirror, and I saw this truck coming and not stopping. I got out, oh, my, and God oh. didn't get it. Actually, <laughs> she, the la actually, she said, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And then bang. And that was it. And you then realized that the airbags had, had deployed, correct? They had, and they had deflated by mm -hmm. that time. And my foot was stuck in the area where the radio is. Mm -hmm. It was literally wedged in there, and I couldn't move it. And we were fairly calm, considering we, you know, were talking and trying to, you know, get out. We you were assessing who was injured out of the injuries? Yeah, we couldn't breathe from the dust from the airbags. That was absolutely terrible. All right, look, please welcome Carol Lee and Mary Ellen's angels, Dominic, Karen, and Bill to the show. Welcome them. And I said, Dominic, now you, you owned the restaurant at the time, which was called yeah. Dominic's, right across the street from where this happened. Right on the same side, yeah. Right on the same side of the street. Happened, happened right in front of the place. You guys were sitting, you were two patrons, right? The two of you? Yes. We were yes. lunch. In there eating, having lunch? Yes. Who saw it first out of the three of you? You did. I was working in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and I heard it, actually. And I actually looked out the back door and saw the second truck hit them. Okay. And ran to the bartender and said, call 911. You come out with the fire station, shh, trying to put it out? I'm under the hood. I emptied it. Mm -hmm. And finally I looked at Bill and I said, <laughs> and I looked in the car and it was flames. Come out. I mean, they were flames coming up near them. You see the flames? Yeah, oh, the flames, flames are yeah. right in front of me, right in front of the dashboard by the steering wheel. Uh, so, now, you, are, you, are you lucid enough to know that there's people around you trying to help? There were people, there was a man, I remember opening the door as much as I could, and a man, I said, help, we have to get out, and the man said, oh, it's just steam, stay there. Mm -hmm. And we, the flames were there, I knew it wasn't steam, and then I looked over and saw Karen's face in the window, and I believe she said, we're going to get you out. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I remember is my door coming open and seeing, I believe, Bill and Dominic. Yeah, the two of you were able to take it out, but exactly. let's talk about what happened. As soon as you pulled them from the, from the, the rubble, oh, what Fires happened? started popping. We were getting pelted by burning rubber. We couldn't open the door very easily. Mm -hmm. Bill finally gave a big yank on it in between the two of us and yanked it open. When we got them out of the car, we were, they, were, they looked like they were severely injured. And wait, I should stop and say, you went, the two of you went to get Carol Lee out of the car, grabbed the first and started pulling her, and she didn't come. Yeah. No. No, I had her reach no. down. I got her, her leg was pinned. We didn't know at the time. I reached down, got her underneath the dashboard, pulled her foot out. I had to. It was either that. At the particular time, I remember one guy yelling behind me, don't touch them, they're injured. I asked him, what do you want me to do, let him cook? They really and truly did not want us to touch anybody. Oh, they were yelling at us. They were yelling at us. Absolutely ridiculous. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. So let's, let's just pick it up from right there. So at the, this point, you're yanking to pull her leg loose. You don't know whether she's broke, busted up. How are the two of you feeling? At this my, my, uh, the breathing was a problem, and my foot, the pain was excruciating. I didn't know at the time that my left leg was hurt worse than my right leg was. A Sorry. piece of the seat went through the back of my leg out the front. It was pretty much speared through the... And, and you were telling them, just grab me and pull me out, I'll jump on my other leg. I told them, I'll hop on one foot, just help me. <laughs> All right, so now you get them out, you pull them to the side, and then, again, what happened to the car? Um, well, we got 10 feet from the car. The flames just started going higher and higher. We moved it once, then everything started exploding, all the tires started just popping. We mm -hmm. moved them again, black smoke, you couldn't even see the car, because... All the seats started going on fire and the black smoke, and we were like, we couldn't breathe. So we had to move them again. We had to pick them up again, and they were like, just in so Stop, much pain. Leave me here, right? Yeah, but, and then we thought the gas tank was going to explode, so we had to move them again. After you start moving them a second time, what, what did you start to realize there, Bill? 
Did you realize I knew him? <laughs> you know, I didn't know Carol Lee. She, she was your little girl. I didn't know her. But Mary Ellen and I grew up together in Sussex. It's a small town. The whole families know each other. And I didn't realize it was her until we were carrying her over and looked down her face. Because I was, I was holding her head and neck because I thought she had a neck injury. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who it was. I was like, holy hell. Mary Ellen. I know it. But isn't it the coincidence of that is the fact that, you know, you live in a neighborhood, and why not have a neighbor or somebody you know be the person who helps in and steps up and does something to help save somebody's life? What was it, the mayor? Who acknowledges you later? Oh, for that. The mayor wanted to I went to the town, and I asked mm -hmm. that the town, would they please give them some recognition for saving our life? Mm -hmm. and, and deservingly so. They should have. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. <laughs> You were, you were, the, the trip was scheduled so that you could drop off some gifts or something, we right? We were dropping off engagement gifts and things because I was getting married in a few months and the, the stuff was outgrowing the room so I had to get a storage facility. And everything was destroyed in that car? Everything but Except my mom and one small plaque that was given to us um, as an engagement gift. It was actually an Irish wedding blessing. And what does that say? I don't recall all the words but it ends with may you, may you see your children's children. And they find happiness. And they find happiness. And obviously that was the only piece that survived. The only thing. And the box was literally un undamaged. A little bit of soot, but just like I had put it in the car. Well, you know, and again, here's another example. I keep saying this. You know, we're backstage on a break and somebody walked up to me and said, well, how, this makes me want to feel like I want to go and save somebody. Oh. Well, I'm hoping that people wake up and realize that, you know, the next time you see something going on right across the street from you, damn, at least use your phone and call 911. If you can't do that, do something else. Get somebody else to get involved. Do like these people did. It's time for us to start stepping up and helping people. You would do this again, would you not? Oh, yeah. And for one second, I'm going to ask, because there is a, you know, for what, during the time that you walked up to do this, did you for one time think about yourself? Because that car was on fire. I mean, you could time I actually was scared was when the tire blew. Because yeah. we had our backs turned to the car, we were moving further. And that tire blew. I really thought the gas thing. And my two boys were watching on, and they were like, "Tell them, don't do it, don't do it." That's what I'm really scared about. It. Well, but you only know time I got scared is when I, she told me to go back for her purse. <laughs> when I went back for the purse, I said, "Nah." <laughs> <laughs> well, look, my next guest says.